I recently attended the CS Ed Grad virtual conference. And during the final session, a more relaxed affair where students felt free to share some of their wit and humor, the topic of computational thinking emerged and promptly got skewered by a very telling joke that, well, only CS Ed graduates would understand. But it goes like this. If you put 20 CS Ed graduates in a Zoom room together to debate computational thinking, you'd end up with 20 different definitions of computational thinking. <laughs> My name is Yi Ping Hang. I'm a CT researcher, and this is the problem with computational thinking. It was a really good joke, and what made it so good was that it reflects the reality that there are many, many definitions of computational thinking out there. And it reflects real frustration in CS Ed about it. Uh, here's a quick primer. I'm on a research project offering computational thinking professional development for K-5 educators. And we teach that computational thinking is a set of problem-solving thought processes derived from computer science that can be used by anyone in any context to understand problems, find solutions to them, and solve them. And then we describe four separate CT components, decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithms. Or, if you reorganize the order of them, they're together sometimes referred to as the Prada concepts. Simple, right? Except that's not all there is. That's all we tell our K-5 teachers, but there are a slew of other CT concepts that appear in literature, all nicely aggregated by the usually annual literature reviews of computational thinking. There are so many I won't even read them all. And different researchers will choose different concepts to include in their own definitions of computational thinking. And some are so kind as to categorize the concepts so that CT researchers can identify common characteristics shared by groups of concepts. Uh, thank you for all the definitions. And that's the problem with computational thinking in a nutshell. So it isn't surprising that CT is a little bit of a joke in CS education. After all, how can you teach CT if you can't really pinpoint what it is? Even sadder is that CS Ed itself also isn't taken very seriously by CS departments, which historically haven't been interested in CS pedagogy. So if the originators of computational thinking aren't likely to take CT seriously, then how is it that CT research is still continuing? Luckily, there is a second stakeholder. CT has been taught to educators as a way for them to get young students exposure to computational concepts and anecdotally, teachers love it. If educators do indeed love CT, then maybe CT research has a home in the field of education. This leads to many questions. Okay, maybe too many. Let's focus on a primary question. Why do educators respond to computational thinking differently than computer scientists do? Does professional experience make a difference in understanding? How much? What about context? Does usage in an elementary classroom somehow make it better than usage at the university level? Perhaps personality types make a difference. Maybe how a person naturally approaches problem solving influences how they respond to learning CT. So what does current research say about computer scientists and CT? Nothing. They already use it all the time. Presumably. Uh, for some reason, no one's been interested yet in confirming just how CT is used by computer scientists. Instead, CT research is focused on educating teachers. There is plenty of research on teacher preconceptions, and the development of CT understanding, and the development of CT professional development, and teacher classroom context and usage which is a very sensible sequence of CT research. And recently, Kylie and Bunsgaard have studied principal perceptions of CT in Denmark, which kind of doesn't fit the research sequence, but there's an important conclusion in their research. They say, our results reflect long-standing Nordic traditions about what compulsory education is about. 
Computational thinking is not about pushing students into computing careers. Rather, it is about supporting the well-rounded development of human beings in a free and democratic society. This is an outside factor, culture, that's influencing the understanding of CT. So if culture can influence understanding of CT, maybe it's not so far-fetched to think that there could be other factors. Yes. So, a quick recap. Computer scientists introduced CT to the world. Researchers introduced CT to educators, and educators love CT. At the same time, computer scientists struggle to define CT, and they start to have second thoughts. But before we can ask why this is happening, we first need to confirm that this is what is happening. So I designed a CT survey that would hopefully confirm just that. My predictions were as follows. One, educators like CT more than computer scientists. And two, educators use it differently. Here's why I sent the survey to instructors at Michigan State University, my peers from the CS Ed Grad Conference, K-5 teachers in my CTPD research project, and researchers on my CTPD research project. I got 18 participants, and I was hoping to get a decent split of teachers and computer scientists, and I ended up with six K-5 teachers, five computer scientists, and six other educators, so anyone from middle school through graduate school. And one participant I removed because they indicated they had no clue what CT was. Oops, my bad. On to the results. Because of the small sample size, my results cannot be considered significant. But yes, it appears educators do like CT more than computer scientists. I generated visualizations of how subgroups used CT. So in these visual... Uh, figures. Each bar line represents the percentage of a subgroup that indicated they used that specific CT concept. I intentionally removed the labels on the x-axis so you can focus just on the visual shape of the profile. And as you can see, there's a slight visual difference in how educators use CT. Again, nothing significant though. Uh, I did kind of wonder, understanding between elementary educators and educators in higher ed, ed might be significantly different. So I created a visualization of just elementary educators, and this result seems more substantial. The CT profile of elementary educators appears to skew heavily towards, well, the product concepts that we taught them in our PD, whereas computer scientists use a fairly large gamut of the concepts. Here's a nifty GIF animating the difference in CT profiles. And if we rechart just elementary educator feelings about CT, they do appear to like CT slightly more than educators as a whole. I did some quantitative analysis, none of which was significant because of the small sample size, but I extrapolated from my chi-square testing to see how large a sample I would need for the ratios I was getting to be significant, and I found these five fun potential relationships. One. Uh, practice in the field of education is related to the application of data practices, which makes sense. Um, I'm in education and I just analyze a bunch of data. Um, application of abstraction is related to application of pattern recognition. And uh, this made sense to me as this is what we teach in our professional development. A high opinion of computational thinking is related to thinking computational thinking can function as standalone problem solving process. Um, this was good to see. I agree with this uh, relationship. Generalization is related to expertise in applying CT. And this was interesting. So those who are really good at using CT tend to seem to tend to use generalization more. And then lastly, uh, simulation and modeling is related to both teaching CT in science and social studies. And that kind of makes sense as well. Um, although I would 
think that it's used a lot more often in science than in social studies. So as the sample size gets larger, I'd be interested to see if this relationship still holds true. Uh, my survey didn't ask why educators like CT so much, so in a revised survey, uh, I included that as well as these other features. Uh, finer differentiation between professions through branching in the survey. Uh, usage of scales for likes and opinions. Uh, I wanted to survey the source of participants' CT knowledge. And then I wanted better problem-solving disposition questions. I didn't really get many uh, sort of significant or substantial results from my first attempt. I plan to disseminate the survey. Uh, in sort of an intentional way so that I can get as many participants as possible uh, and have a higher chance of getting significant results. So here's what I plan to do. Uh, first I need a, peers, a couple peers to review the second version of this survey. I like to schedule survey dates for, uh, for when the survey is going to be open. And so before February 1st I need to identify some educator groups preferably uh, those who are getting CT, some sort of CT professional development. And I know there are other CS for All uh, NSF funded projects uh, throughout the nation. And then after that, I'd like to communicate, sort of send email to the PIs of those projects and explain what uh, the survey is for. Uh, I'd like to communicate with prominent CT researchers that I've read or watched at conferences and then also communicate with my CSA grad peers again. And hopefully uh, all this communication will lead to, I'm hoping at least 120 participants on my next survey. And lastly, um, some research questions that I'm curious about um, as a result of this first survey. Um, so yes, of course, why do educators like CT better than computer scientists? And can CT researchers solidify those product concepts or are there more concepts that we can help elementary educators learn so their profile starts to look more like this computer scientist CT profile. I'd um, like to know specifically what the progression of CT knowledge is in uh, educators at different levels of education. So uh, what do middle school and high school and higher education teachers think about CT and how do they use it? And then lastly, how might culture influence CT understanding? Now this is more difficult to ascertain as I think I would have to send this survey internationally or a survey internationally. So I'll probably hold off on investigating this one uh, for a while. Thank you for watching my presentation. I had a blast making this and making some progress, however small, at tackling this problem of why computational thinking is understood and defined differently by different groups of people. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me. And when I eventually get results from the second version of the survey, I'll be sure to post them on my blog. Thank you. Hey, so I might as well tell you, in case you were wondering why there were three minutes left of this presentation, there is an after-references scene to this presentation. So stay tuned. Don't leave. So I'd like to give you a quick glance at the second version of the survey that I've worked that I'm working on. Uh, and the, right off the bat, uh, the very first question I ask, uh, if the participant doesn't know anything about computational thinking, then the form is submitted right away, and I don't have their uh, results skewing the rest of the data. I've simplified uh, some of the impression and opinion and like questions, uh, but then I've added a Likert scale uh, to two of them so that uh, people who want to give more than just yes or no answers uh, can be a little bit nuanced in their replies. Uh, here's my question about where people learned about computational thinking uh, and some of the options. Um, and then this question is designed to ask about to sort of suss out 
people's preconceptions of the computational thinking. And then um, here are the two why questions that I've included. Why people might like computational thinking and why they might dislike computational thinking. And this will make progress into helping me understand uh, why. There are some better problem solving disposition questions, at least I think. Here's a um, big picture, details persons, uh, different things that people might be able to do in meetings, um, whether you'd like to share or listen first, uh, how you feel you're more effective by yourself or with other people, different types of problems you might excel at solving, and then I changed these from multiple choice to checkbox so uh, people wouldn't feel forced to answer one way or another. And then I completely revamped the professional background portion of the survey and have it branch sort of in just multiple ways. So uh, this will branch to the student section or skip it. And this will give me a lot more detail uh, into students and exactly how they use CT. After that, I branch on whether the participant teaches and I get a lot more details on what grade they teach and what subjects they teach and uh, where they taught CT and uh, how they use CT and how they teach it. Um, and I branch on whether a participant conducts research and get a lot more details, uh, especially whether they actually are a computational thinking researcher, I think that'd be important to know and maybe split those guys off into a subgroup. Um, and uh, there are administrators in my computational thinking project, uh, so I thought I'd identify them as well. And uh, if it so happens that I end up with computer scientists who work in industry, I'd like to know that as well. And that's pretty much it. It's a much longer survey than before, but hopefully the branching won't make it uh, so, won't make it so long when people are actually taking it. Um, but it's I think a much better second survey than the first one.